we will now look at extension theorems. So we already saw that if you if omega admitted an extension operator for w1 p of omega then we can improve Friedrich's theorem by having the conver convergence of the derivatives in LP of omega rather than only on relatively compact sets. And also as I already remarked earlier, if you have uh, the many results because using calculus can be proved in uh, Rn because you are not uh, constrict constrained by any boundary and therefore uh, and you have uh, tools like convolution and so on and then it is easier to restrict it. So uh, having a prolongation operator is, is a good thing. For instance, if you are having a function on 0, 1 for instance, so any w1 p function is going to be a, a absolutely continuous function as we saw. That means these values at the endpoints are well defined and now you simply connect it by means of a straight line and you can prove. So, if you write down the formulae for these things. So, this is u, so this will be u of 0 and this will be u of 1 and then you can easily write out what is this new function uh, in R, R and you can show that it is in fact a uh, extension operator. But you can, there are many of them, you can also do say another one like this. This will also be an extension operator. So, you can, you can write down the formula you can check it for yourself we will probably see it in the exercises or the assignments. Okay. Now, we are going to describe the method of reflection which gives you a very general method for uh, when especially when there are flat portions of the boundary to give you an extension. So, first so method of reflection. So, first some notation. So, we take x in Rn and therefore you can write it in terms of its coordinates say x1, xn minus 1 and xn. And we will write this as x dash xn where x dash equals x1 to xn minus 1 and this now belongs to R n minus 1. So, we are looking at Rn as Rn minus 1 cross r in the xn direction and this is how we are we represent the function this. So, we write r n plus is equal to set of all x in r n such that x n is strictly positive. So, this is what we call as the upper half plane. Okay. So, the points which are so, so x n is strictly positive, you call it the upper half plane. So, now we have the following theorem. Let 1 less than equal to p less than infinity. Let u belong to w 1 p of r, uh, r n plus. Define u star on R n by u star of x equals u of x dash x n which is same as u of x if x n is positive and u of x dash minus x n if x n is negative. So, if x n is positive, x n is negative, so then it will be a point in this uh, lower half plane. So, you take its reflection in the uh, upper half plane across the mirror which is r n minus 1 and then define the function over there. So, this is defining the function just by reflection. So, then the claim is then u star belongs to w 1 p of r n and mod u star p 0 p r n that is the LP norm in r n power p is equal to twice mod u power p on 0 p r n minus uh, r n plus and you have mod u star p 
1 p r n is also equal to twice mod u power p 1 p r n plus. So, in particular u mapping to u star defines an extension operator from w 1 p r n plus into w 1 p of r n. So, you if you have r n plus then you can define by reflection a uh, very nice extension to this ok. So, clearly u star belongs to L p of r n. So, it is just you can integrate it is just the same function you are repeating twice. So, the change of variable formula you get this and norm u star <coughs> mod u star 0 p r n power p is nothing but twice mod u power p 0 p r n plus. There is nothing to see here it is just the uh, integral is repeated twice once in the upper half plane once in the lower half plane by change of variable x n going to minus x n you can convert it to that integral. So, you get twice ok. So, so it so, we need to study the derivatives of u star. So, we need to study the derivatives of u star. Okay. So, first step we take let zeta belong to c infinity of r such that 0 less than or equal to zeta less than or equal to 1 and zeta t equal to 0 if t is less than or equal to 1 and 1 if t is greater than or equal to 2. So, what are we looking at zeta? So, you have 0 here then you have 1 here. So, zeta t is 0 here and from 2 onwards it is taking the fun value 1 and in between it is something smooth which you have connected up and this is zeta and you have this function. And you define zeta k of t as zeta of k t. So, that zeta k of t will still be between 0 and 1 and it is 0 if t is less than or equal to 1 over k and 1 if t uh, t is greater or equal to 2 by k ok. So, this is that function zeta which we are having ok. So, now step 2 we are going to compute the derivatives ok. So, let phi belong to d of r n and let 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n minus 1. We are looking at the first n minus 1 derivatives. Then consider r n of u star d phi by d x i. This is equal to integral over r n plus u d psi by d x i d x where psi of x dash x n is equal to phi of x dash x n plus phi of x dash minus x n ok for x n positive ok. How did I get this? I broke up the integral into two parts. So, if I take u star I would have got integral of u over r n plus d phi by d x i plus integral over r n minus of u of x dash minus x n d phi by d x i x dash 
minus uh, x dash xn sorry and now if you make a change of variable take minus xn equals y so that y will become uh, in rn plus and then you this will become minus y and that is why you have this term second term here in the thing. So, this is just a change of variable simple change of variable which we are doing ok. So, now unfortunately psi does not belong to d of rn plus. So, we because we do not have uh, we are just taking a, a phi could be a function whose support is something like this and therefore it need not vanish here and I am just uh, taking the reflection this phi of x dash minus x n is uh, reflection of this part over here and that therefore need not vanish uh, anywhere near the boundary. Okay, so, therefore, we are going to multiply it by zeta k. So, we multiply psi by zeta k x n. Then we have that zeta k psi belongs to d of r n plus because zeta will be 0 uh, look at zeta k. Zeta k will be uh, 0 if uh, x n will be 0 if for 1 over k. So, there is a small layer here where it will be 0 and therefore, when you multiply by zeta phi of zeta k uh, psi times zeta k belongs to d of r n plus. Therefore, you have by the definition of the distribution derivative d of integral over r n plus u d by d x i zeta k psi d x is equal to minus integral over r n plus d u by d x i of x zeta k which depends only on x n and you have psi of x d x. Okay. So, now let us uh, Now, 1 is less than or equal to i is less than or equal to n minus 1 and that implies that integral over r n plus of u d zeta k psi by d x i d x is equal to integral over r n plus u of x and then zeta k of x n because that is like a constant it will not be and to deep psi by d x i at x. So, now let us what happens we have that zeta k of x goes to 1 point wise because zeta k of x will be 1 if x is uh, xn is bigger than 2 by k. So, ultimately as k tends to infinity is uh, almost all of our, uh, rn plus will slowly get covered and therefore, point wise this converges to uh, 1 and for all point wise for all t greater equal to 0 zero k of t let us say. So, we can now apply the dominated convergence theorem in each of these integrals. You have two fixed functions and zeta k which converges to 1 and the modulus is bounded by mod psi into du by dx i and here or d psi by dx i and u and they are all integrable functions therefore, you have no problems at all. So, by the dominated convergence theorem you can pass to the limit. So, the left hand side when you go to uh, will give you integral over r n plus of u x d psi by d x i at x d x equal to minus integral over r n plus d u by d x i at x psi x d x. Okay. So, now going back to the definition of psi. So, what is the definition of psi? psi is this function you go back and then you write this back as an integral over r n instead of r n plus and you use again the fact that 1 is less than equal to i is less than equal to n minus 1 and therefore, this gives you that integral over r n 
of u star d phi by d x i d x equal to minus integral over r n d u by d x i phi x phi x phi x uh, du by dx i phi so I am going to write the x uh, dash x n minus so this is integral r n plus minus integral r n plus du by dx i phi x dash minus x n dx ok and therefore you now define du by dx i star is the same function of reflection so x dash x n equal to du by dx i x dash x n if x n is positive and d u by d x i x dash minus x n if x n is negative ok. Then star implies that integral over r n d u, u star d phi by d x i d x is equal to minus integral d u by d x i star phi over r n ok. So, this implies that for 1 less than equal to i less than equal to n minus 1 we have d u star by d x i is nothing but d u by d x i star and therefore, this belongs to L p of r n and in fact, if you take the L p norm of this you will precisely get 2 times the so d u by d u star by d x i 0 p r n will be in fact twice integral uh, uh, twice d u by d x i power p 0 p r n plus ok. So, this uh, is proving. So, now we have to consider step 3 where we are taking i equals n the derivative in the nth direction. So, once again you take phi in d of r n and now you take integral over r n of u star d phi by d x n d x and then if you expand it the definition of u star again r n plus r n minus you break the integral and on r n minus you make a change of variable. But now since you are having a derivative in the nth direction when you differentiate with respect x n you pick up a minus sign and therefore, this will give you integral over r n plus of u d psi by d x n d x where psi of x dash x n is equal to phi of x dash x n minus phi of x dash minus x n. This is for x n positive. So, again this is not a, a d, a d r n plus function and therefore, d psi. Again we multiply by zeta k and therefore, you have integral over r n plus u of d zeta k x n psi x by d x n d x equal to minus integral d u by d x n over r n plus of zeta k x n psi of x uh, x dx 
Okay, so now you look at the left hand side again. So, d by d x n of zeta k x n psi of x. So, in the previous thing uh, we were taking the derivatives up to n minus 1. So, this function was like a constant, but now you have to differentiate with respect to that also. So, this will give you zeta k x n d psi by d x n plus k times psi of x into zeta dash k x n because we have defined zeta k as zeta k t is zeta of k t. So, the, when you differentiate that with respect to x n, so you get a k a factor of k will come out in this expression. Okay. So, now you look at the we estimate, so this one is fine, we can pass to the limit there is no problem. Here you have k which tends to infinity and you have some zeta k dash etcetera. So, let us look at that integral integral over r n plus of k u x which comes from from here into uh, psi x zeta dash k x n d x. So, this is one of the two terms on the left hand side ok and now psi of x dash 0 is 0 because now if you put because what is the definition of psi it is phi of x dash x n minus phi of x dash minus x n. So, if you put 0 x n equal to 0 then these two will get cancelled. So, you get psi of x dash uh, 0 is 0. So, by the mean value theorem you have that mod of psi of x dash x n will be less than or equal to some constant times mod x n where c is a positive constant depending on the bound. So, depending on the bound for derivatives of phi. Phi is a scene free function with compact support. So, it is uniformly bounded in R n. So, I do not have to worry about any dependence on x dash and therefore, this, uh, this thing. And also zeta dash is a bounded function which is non-zero only between 1 and 2. So, zeta is 0 here up to 1 and then zeta dash and zeta dash will be 0 again. So, it is only between t equals 1 and t equals 2 that you have that zeta dash is non-zero. So, everywhere else it is 0. Therefore, if you take the modulus integral over r n plus of k u x psi x zeta dash k x n dx I take the modulus this is equal to k times mod integral. Now, this integral on r n plus I am going to restrict it it is actually the integral on support of phi integral intersection of 1 by k less than x n less than 2 by k because only in that range you have that zeta dash is non-zero. Okay. So, zeta dash k x n will be 0 only uh, between 1 and 2 and therefore, x n must be between 1 by k and 2 by k. So, if you that and you have u x psi x zeta dash x n uh, k x n d x. That is less than or equal to k times some constant c and integral over support of phi intersection 1 by k less than x n less than 2 by k of mod u x psi is bounded function. So, it uh, ok and zeta k zeta dash uh, x n is less than equal to mod x n by uh, I mean psi is less than uh, zeta dash is bounded and therefore, we have pulled it out as a constant mod psi we saw is less than just mod x n.
dx and that is less than or equal to xn is less than 2 by k. So, this cancels with the k. So, you get 2c integral support of phi intersection 1 by k less than xn less than 2 by k of mod u dx ok and this goes to 0 because the measure of this domain of integration goes to 0 because its support of phi is a compact set and you are intersecting it with a small strip whose uh, distance uh, width is only 1 by k and therefore you have a compact set with a, a strip of 1 by k. So, the measure will go to 0 as k goes to 0 and since the Lebesgue integral is absolutely continuous with respect to um, uh, absolutely continuous and therefore this has to go to 0 and therefore we have when you pass to the limit as before zeta k tends to 1 and therefore we can pass to the limit in this equation here and so the second there were two terms the second term went to 0. So, the first term is the zeta k d psi by d x i and therefore you have integral over r n plus of u of x d psi by d x n x d x is equal to minus integral over r n plus d u by d x n psi d x ok. And then so from this we get that d u star by d x n if you again untangle the defi definition of psi and go back to phi and therefore if you do that you will get this is nothing but d u by d x n dagger where so, I will leave you to unravel the change of variable ok and that is equal to uh, where v dagger x dash x n equal to v of x dash x n if x is x n is positive and minus v of x dash minus x n if x n is negative. Again, this implies that V dagger belongs to LP of Rn if V belongs to LP of Rn plus and mod V dagger uh, 0 P Rn over P is equal to 2 times mod V 0 P Rn plus over P and therefore, once again you have whatever we promised that mod du star by dxn 0 p rn is equal to 2 times power p is mod 2 mod uh, not uh, uh, yeah uh, 2 times mod uh, du by dxn 0 p rn plus power p and that completes the proof of the theorem. Okay, so Corollary one less than or equal to p less than infinity. The restriction of d of r n to r n to r n plus is dense in w 1 p r n plus because any element in w 1 p r n plus can be L prolonged to the whole space by through this reflection method and there you have d of you can approximate it in w 1 p r n by d of r n functions and then you simply restrict it to r n plus. So, because you have a prolongation operator uh, we do not need Friedrich's theorem you can do everything without relatively compact sets. In particular we have C infinity R n plus intersection W 1 P R n plus is dense in W 1 P R n plus. Okay. 
another remark so this proof so above proof can be easily adapted for sets like q plus which is equal to set of all x in Rn says that mod x dash is less than 1 and 0 less than xn less than 1. So, you are taking a sort of here you have a cylinder like, so like a cylinder. So, you have mod x dash less than equal to 1 which is this portion and xn between 0 and 1 ok. And then you can do So, reflection gives a prolongation operator uh, or extension operator ok prolongation operator that is extension operator from W1P Q plus to w 1 p of q where q is the set set of all x in r n such that mod x dash is less than 1 and x mod x n is also less than 1 ok. So, you have you can extend it to the whole cube just by reflecting on this the same proof will go through nothing will change uh, because it is uh, not dependent. Now, we can use this trick to extend define prolongation operators for some sets like for instance take the square. Suppose I have a square like this ok. Now, by so this is omega. Now, by reflection on this line I can extend it to this rectangle. Now, by reflection on this line I can further extend it to this rectangle. Now, by reflection on this line I can extend it further finally, by reflection on this line I can extend the function 4. So, each time I would have taken a factor of 2 uh, in the powers of the in the integrals of the derivatives and the function. So, this 4 times I have done it 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that will be 16 and therefore, that is a constant which is well under control. Now, what you do is you take a psi in d of rn with psi identically 1 on omega closure in the neighborhood of it and then you take uh, so, you you have this u star. Uh, so, I, let me call it u 4 the four, four fold extension of u and then multiply by psi that will give you an extension and then extend outside the square by 0 will give you an extension to w 1 p r n from w 1 p of omega. Okay. So, you have u, you have u 1 which is the extension here, then u 2 which is the extension to this square, u 3 which is the extension to the third one and u 4 is the fourth extension. So, you have 4 and then you have a multiply by psi and therefore, you will get a function which is um, uh, vanishing outside a compact set and therefore, you will then extend it by 0 nothing no harm is done and it will continue to be equal to omega uh, u inside omega ok. So, this way we can define uh, use this for instance. So, now we can for instance suppose I have a triangle a right angle triangle like this ok. Then by reflection on the hypotenuse I can extend it to the square and then from the square I know how to extend it to the whole whole plane. So, I also have an extension operator for the triangle ok. So, the method of reflection is very useful when you have such flat portions on the boundary to do it. Next, we will consider a general method for domains. So, what for what kind of domains we can define extension operators reflection was very special and now we will see 
for other kinds of domains where we will use this reflection idea and, and the partition of unity and then see how that is to be done.